Thank you, Mayor Johnson, for all of your leadership. I, I have to say, think about what you just heard, Mayor Johnson, representing Sacramento on the West Coast. Mayor Rawlings, our host here in Texas. I represent New York City in the Northeast. We all would use the exact same phrase. This is not just an inequality gap, an income gap. It is a chasm. I think it's a powerful point. And I thank Mayor Rawlings again for the sharpness with which he helped to lead off this conference as our host. And I thank Mayor Johnson for really drilling down on these issues and forming this task force, and I'm honored to lead it. The fact is, and you'll hear from all of my colleagues, I'm going to mention some of what they've been doing. I ran on a notion that we had to address the tale of two cities. We all know every one of our cities has that tale of two cities operating within it. We all know that now, sadly, there's two countries in terms of this chasm of divide in terms of income and opportunity. It can't go on. It can't go on functionally. It's not healthy. It does not allow us to have a strong, stable society. It certainly does not give people a sense of hope and belonging and participation. I mentioned a moment ago in my speech, the CNN poll just recently drives home the point so powerfully. 59% of respondents nationally did not think the American dream was achievable for them. 63% were convinced their children could not do better than them. What has happened in this country when a clear majority of our people no longer feel they can access the very notion that all of us grew up with? And so the thesis here is that we're going to do something about it. We'd love the federal government to do something about it more forcefully, more coherently. We'd love a lot of our state governments to join with us. But while we're trying to create some of that momentum, we're going to do something to start the ball rolling. Because if you look around, each and every one of these cities represented here has done something profound to address inequality. Sometimes with one hand tied behind our back because we have not exactly been awash in federal and state resources. And yet, that hasn't stopped anyone. So I can say humbly, I'm the rookie here. i am only been on the job about six months, but we've tried to break the pattern in New York City. We're going to have full day pre-K for all our children. We're going to have an affordable housing plan for 200,000 units over 10 years. We've passed a paid sick leave law that reaches a half a million more people. We're taking action on a host of issues, including those that affect immigrants, like the municipal ID bill that will allow us to provide an ID for folks who have been left out because they're undocumented, but still are our neighbors. These are the kinds of things we're working on. Look at what's happening around the country, and you see this pattern so clearly. Obviously, the eyes of the nation have been on Seattle, and I commend Mayor Murray for his leadership passing the minimum wage bill. Commend Mayor Nutter for what he's done with a higher minimum wage for city contract employees. Minneapolis has this extraordinary cradle to K initiative under the leadership of Mayor Hodges trying to reach children early and give them a strong start. One by one, you see the same patterns. One of my personal favorites, having grown up in the Boston area, is Mayor Walsh's. Now, if you're from Boston, you'll immediately understand this wording. Mayor Walsh's, quote unquote, wicked free Wi Fi program, which goes right at the question of internet access for all, which goes at the question of economic opportunity for all and addressing the digital divide. Here in Houston, Mayor Parker's simple, straightforward idea that people who live uh, here in Houston, I'm sorry, I'm in Dallas, there in Houston, Mayor Parker's simple, straightforward idea that you ought to hire people who haven't always had opportunity by hiring local. So her hire Houston first plan implicitly reaches a lot of people who have not benefited from the economy. Look at what Mayor Rawlings is doing. It's not just what he said uh, in the opening remarks of this conference is that he's put, for, put forth a task force to go right at the question of poverty, to name it and address it. Here's a guy who was a CEO of a major corporation, and he understands this is not a partisan issue. This is not an issue of just public sector or just private sector. It's something that we all have to grapple with, and so he's naming it and acting on it and convening his whole city in that common cause. Look around the country on these issues of addressing the challenges of immigrants, particularly undocumented immigrants. Mayor Garcetti, 
in Los Angeles, Mayor Kwan in Oakland, Mayor Harp in New Haven. Each and, one, and every one of these cities has passed a municipal ID program. That is the foundation for all we're going to do with our new Cities of Opportunity Task Force. Because as you've heard, each and every one of the mayors here and a lot of others are creating Cities of Opportunity in their own way. Without the support that they deserve from other levels of government, they're still making it happen. We have to build the models out. Because a lot of times when one of us acts, it helps the other one act. It sets the bar higher, it shows what's possible. We have to amplify and speed that effort. So there's best practices, which is clearly something we all want to utilize as an idea, learning from each other's successes. But there's also organizing together to magnify our successes, help them happen more quickly, and then set an example for the federal government, an example for state governments of the kind of urgency that we need in making these changes. We have to reestablish an urban agenda for this nation. And as chair of this task force, I will be honored with Mayor Johnson and my colleagues to start to recreate something that was commonplace for decades, a strong, clear urban agenda that actually gets worked on and acted on in Washington. We'll be convening at Gracie Mansion on August 11th to plan out the next steps in this urgent effort. This is going to be a task force that does not just talk, but actually creates an action plan for cities around the country. It will be bipartisan. It will be inclusive. Doesn't matter which size city, which party you're in. If you want to fight inequality, if you want to create opportunity, you are welcome and we need you. So I'm honored, I'm humbled to be part of this effort with my colleagues because I know we already are cracking the code. We're already making a difference. Now we have to do it on a much larger level. Before I finish, Special thank you. I'm, I guess I can't say the special guest name, right? Because <laughs> President Johnson doesn't want me to say Maria Shriver, so I won't. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> sorry, that's a New York way of doing things. We just uh, her ten point. I love this. The city festo. Her ten point city festo for mayors to focus on improvement in policies that strengthen women and families. It's going to be a valuable tool to all of us, and we thank her for all she is doing. And now I have the honor of introducing a mayor who's, he's, he's new like me, but he's making a big impact already. And the city of Boston, I know it well, a place with a complicated history, amazing uh, place in our nation, a place where great progress has happened, a place where there's been more than its fair share of challenges and divisions. But Mayor Walsh has been absolutely part of the solution. And there's an energy, I talk to people in Boston all the time, there's an energy he has created about taking on inequality head on, about healing up past wounds that people in Boston are feeling excitement about and they're, they're gratified to have a leader as good as them, Mayor Walsh.